to write. And to know this meeting is being recorded. Mm -hmm. So that requires you to know what to write. And therefore, it requires you to have everything that you need. In the history paper, there is no time that your pen has failed. And so you ask the invigilator, please, I don't have a pen. Let them help me. That time is not there. So it means that on the day when you're going for history, go when you have everything. Go when you know you are not going to go out for a short call. Go out when you know it is time for serious <laughs> business. That's what I'm trying to say. So, how do you ensure that you have finished? How, what is the best way to ensure that you finish your paper? Yes? How do you know, how do you ensure that you have finished? Imagine you're doing the paper and then um, you have used the 30 minutes and uh, that is the only time allocated to one number and then you still have more answers what do you do do you first write all the other answers or you abandon that number and proceed if you have finished i think you first complete the other numbers then you can continue adding you have used 30 minutes that is the only time Allocate into one number, you still have more answers, you have not finished the number. What do you do? Do you continue writing that number or you go to the next number? <laughs> now, the best thing to do is to abandon that number and go to the next number. Even when you still have more answers. Why? Because it is going to be ben more benefiting to you if you start another number than continue with this one number. So that means that you should time yourself. You should Excuse time yourself. Me. Yes. They mark the, the, each number out of 25. Yes. But they say that even there are, the, are, there are marks for the introduction. The introduction is part of the answer, yes. But sometimes marks for... those marks included on the 25 marks. Mm. Oh. Now, let me give you a, 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 an example here. Assuming they have asked you a question like um, this. Why did the Arabs come to the East African coast? Assuming that is the question they have asked. Why did the Arabs come to the East African coast? Yes. And uh, maybe part B, what were the effects of the Arabs at the coast of East Africa? So it's proper that you start by giving us a background where the Arabs came, when the Arabs came to East Africa, and uh, where they settled in East Africa. So you're going to find that is maybe about three points already. You say Arabs are people who came from um, Arab countries, like maybe Saudi Arabia, some came from Oman, some came from Jordan. They came to East Africa between AD 1000 to maybe AD 1500. When they came to East Africa, they settled in many areas. Then you mentioned the areas they settled in. That is part of the introduction. And it is marked and it is awarded. So as other points continue coming, for example, uh, other reasons why the Arabs came, maybe you say they came because they wanted to control the cost because of the strategic location of the cost. Now that is another point. It is marked and the marks is added to, the, the ticks are added to the earlier, the earlier ticks. So the introduction is part of the answer and it is awarded. The marks is given. I hope I've answered you. Thank you. Right. So now you have seen the introduction is very important, and uh, the answers, as you also write the answers, it is very important that you mention the answer in the clearest way. 
Let me show, for example, here. I don't know whether you're seeing this one here. Let me first uh, try to make the letters a little bigger so that people can see what I am meaning. So we are here talking about the Arabs and why they came to the East African coast. Now look at that point number one. O okay, point A. I want someone to read for me point A, and then we see what it means to state the point and explain in a very clear way. You see the first point? No, we are not saying it. Sure. Let me first yes. uh, stop. Okay, let me first stop sharing, then I start sharing again. Okay, uh, select screen here. Allow. You let me know if you are seeing it now. Can you see? Not yet. Is it loading? Yes. yes. Good. I'm sure you will see. So the question is, explain the reasons why the apps settled at the coast of East Africa between AD 1000 to AD 1500. Are you seeing it now? Yes. No. It's taking too long. Anyway, I am sure you're going to start seeing. But the point I'm trying to drive at here is, for example, in this first point, they say desire to control the coast of East Africa. Then you put a comma. Then you start explaining why did the Arabs come to, or what, how do you, uh, uh, you start showing how the Arabs actually had the desire to control the coast. So you say the coast was strategically located and it encouraged Arabs to come to settle for many reasons, maybe for to, to in order to carry out trade. That is enough. So you have just written two lines. The point is very clear, and you go to the next, you go to the next point. As you go to the next point, you again may be saying the Arabs were driven by the desire to spread Islam and to build a Muslim empire at the coast of East Africa. That is enough. You go to the next point. The religious disputes in Arabia. They were forced to look for safer areas where they would settle because of religious conflicts in their homeland. So they ended up settling in East Africa. That is enough. We'll go to the next point like that. So you find that you do not explain too much, but at the same time, your points are very clear. Now this is type two and it is two lines. I am sure if you are writing by hand, maybe it would be slightly more than two lines. Maybe it could be like three lines. So you keep on writing your points, count the points and make sure that they are more than the expected answers. Expected answer here, I mean, for example, if part A, they have given it maybe 12 marks, it means you should write more than 12 points, you see, and including the introduction. It should be more than 12 because you don't know. Sometimes some of the answers you've written may not be correct and they may be crossed. So you have to write many points, but that requires it to be very, very fast. I hope I am clear there. Okay. So are you seeing what I'm sharing now? Able to see? No. no. All right. No. no. Maybe I just have to share again. Disturbing. I pray that it shares this time. All right. 
So let us run through. Why did the Arabs come to the East African coast very fast? And then we go to the other areas. At least one thing we have learned from there is that the introduction is part of the answer and you should never start a question without an introduction. So why did the Arabs come at the East African coast? Who wants to teach us? Give us reasons why these Arabs came. Why did the Arabs come at the East African coast? Yes, Jocelyn, go ahead. Should I just outline? Yes, yes, that's okay. We know what to One, do. One, I love for adventure. Yes, one. Desire to take, to take control of the East African coast. That's two. Desire to... Desire to spread Islam. Mm -hmm. The political the political disputes in Arabia made some Arabs to come to the coast of East Africa. Another four. Uh, they wanted to they wanted to take control of the trade at the coast of East Africa. Another five. Mm -hmm. Jocelyn, can we help now? Other reasons why the Arabs came. There are very many other reasons why Arabs came. Maybe someone else would want to pick it up from there. Very many reasons. Yes, who wants to continue? Continue. All right. Okay. As uh, people still think about other reasons why Arabs came, it is true Arabs also came because of the hospitality of the people of East Africa. The people of East Africa were friendly even to other visitors who came before the Arabs. For example, the Portuguese. You see, it's important that uh, they, to know that the people of East Africa were very friendly. Also, Arabs were attracted by the favorable climate in East Africa. East Africa had a favorable climate that was more conducive than the climate in Arabia because these people came from the deserts. Um, the Arabs were facilitated by the monsoon winds that was uh, blowing seasonally from the from Arabia coming to, towards East Africa. So that made it very easy for the Arabs to come to East Africa. Arabs also settled because they wanted to take over trade or to control the lucrative trade at the cost that was mentioned by Josephine already. Then uh, we had availability of uh, trade items like slaves coming from the interior. Uh, we had, of course, gold coming from the interior, ivory coming from the interior. Then the coast had very fertile soils. So some Arabs were interested in agriculture settled because of uh, the fertility of the soil at the coast. I hope you remember about um, Zanzibar and Said Said, mm -hmm. how he established a farm in Zanzibar. The presence of good natural harbors also encouraged the Arabs to settle at the East African coasts. East Africa had fresh water that also made it easy for Arabs to settle at the coasts. Some of them came because of adventure that was already mentioned by Josephine. And as a result of the increase in population in Saudi Arabia, some of the Arabs came to East Africa to find uh, fresh areas to settle because of the <coughs> high population in Saudi Arabia or in Arabia. 
So you can see that is about the Arabs. I expected many people to have these answers because Arabs is a very, very popular topic. Arabs is a very, very simple topic. So people, as you have seen, uh, we do not remember very well the reasons why the Arabs came to East Africa. So we need to settle and read and remind ourselves about Arabs. Senior one work, Arabs, Portuguese, Swahili culture, the growth of uh, the East African coastal towns. It's very important that we read and master everything around these areas. Why? Because number one can easily come from there. You see, the early history of the coast is a very, very important area where people should read and master everything about, about. So let's go to part B of the same question. What were the effects of uh, Arab settlement at the coast? What were the effects of the settlement of the Arabs at the coast? So, um, who wants to teach us that area? The effects, Elizabeth. Yeah, first and foremost, we said the Arabs imposed themselves as rulers, for example, the Shiraz dynasty, then uh, Kiswahili mm -hmm. language introduced, and then the Arabs introduced a new style of building at the coast, okay. for example, building flat topped houses. Then local people adopted okay. a big way of dressing, whereby men started wearing kanzus and caps while women were putting on long silk dresses. Then, okay. then major Islamic events and practices like circumcision were adopted by the local people. Okay. And then they are coming led to the introduction of Sharia law and titles like sheikhs and sultan. Mm -hmm. uh, then Continue. the other one, the food and eating etiquette of the local people were affected whereby the local mm. people copped Islamic way of sitting cross-legged. Okay. Continue. I'm liking this already. Then intermarriages between the Arabs and the local people led to the Swahili culture. Mm. And then the local chief lost the independence and influence. Okay. Then there was growth of growth development of coastal towns like Madlindi, Mombasa, etc. And then yes. mos mosques and Quranic schools were built. Then, yeah. then Arabic was introduced as the official language to be used in administration. And then they are coming yeah. that they are coming led to the development of slave trade at the coast. Okay. And also, they also introduced the use of human feces as they were to improve on farming. Okay, continue. Then trade increased at the coast, making many to shift from fishing farming, then to trade. Mm. Uh -huh. That's all I can recall for you. Good. That is good enough. You have knowledge about the effects of Arab settlement at the cost. I am sure if that number came, you are going to pass it very highly. Thank you very much for that good presentation. Maybe just a few other things that maybe you didn't uh, mention. There was an introduction of a new currency. There was an introduction of a new currency that was introduced to replace butter system of trade. Introduction of guns at the cost. They introduced guns. The Arabs had guns, so they 
that was introduced by them. East Africa was now linked to the outside world after the coming of the Arab Sea. There was a change in occupation where many local people now abandoned their original occupations and started doing trade. Those who were farmers now also got interested in trade. New techniques of uh, boat making was introduced by the Arabs. The East people of East Africa knew how to, cons to build boats, but they didn't know how to build it like the Arabs did, but that was also introduced. Then later, the coming of the Arabs attracted the Portuguese in East Africa. Mm -hmm. A new law was introduced, the Sharia law. The Arabs introduced the new traditions new things or new, let's say, new commodities in East Africa. For example, they introduced beads, clothes, mirrors, swords, all that was introduced by the Arabs. So at the end of it all, the Arabs changed the life of East Africa or the people of East Africa in a range of ways, including the <clears throat> new way of building, the new way of building uh, where the People of East Africa started building, they, like the Arabs, they started building flat topped houses, including a new way of eating and new foods. For example, the Arabs introduced the pilau, and many people still like pilau today. Uh, she mentioned about uh, the new way of sitting. Yes, that was also introduced by the Arabs. So you can see the effects of the coming of the Arabs are over 25, and they are easy, and they are they should be known by the students. So let's let's make sure that we have mastered the Arabs very very well. Okay, we should master the Arabs. Now, still connected to the Arabs, I want us to talk about the coastal towns. Coastal towns. I don't know whether you still remember these coastal towns, their names. Can somebody take us through the names of the coastal towns? Which ones do you remember? Which coastal towns do you remember? Which coastal towns do you remember? Zanzibar. Before we start talking about the growth. Yes, you remember? Zanzibar. Malindi. Malindi. Mombasa. Mombasa. Kirua. 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 Then we had also, Pemba. there was another one. Pemba. Pemba, yes. Mafia. Mafia. Mm -hmm. Sofala. Sofala. Mogadishu. One very important term, Mogadishu. Yes, I wanted you to mention that one, Mogadishu. All right. So, Elizabeth, is something you want to add? No. Okay. So, let's go to the growth of the coastal towns now. They can ask you questions. You have now seen that after the coming of the Arabs, they settled in different parts of East Africa, and after their settlement, the areas that initially used not to be towns developed and became towns. And those are the areas that came to be known as the coastal towns. Which is the oldest coastal town? We have mentioned all of them. Sofala, Mombasa, Dar es Salaam, where, where. The oldest coastal town is which one? The oldest coastal town was Mogadishu. Mogadishu was the oldest coastal town. Anyway, so what factors led to the growth of the coastal towns? All these towns we have mentioned all together. What factors led to their growth? What factors led to the growth of the coastal towns? Who was Gilbo. Uh, we are getting a lot of feedback from Rose. I think. Can you mute your 
my Rose, there's a lot of feedback. I don't know whether you're speaking. Uh, Rose. Let me just mute Rose from here. Okay, Gilbo, can you take us through factors that led to the growth of the coastal towns? I see your hand is up. What factors led to the growth of the coastal towns? <laughs> You remember them? Elizabeth, your hand is up. You want to give us some answers? Factors that led to the growth of the coastal town? Yes. Yeah, one of them. All right. uh, we have the yeah, we have the hospitality of the coastal people towards the foreigners, which encouraged mm. them to develop the coast. Then the coastal mm. climate was cool and good for human settlement. Mm. Then presence of fertile soils at the coast attracted many people. And then yes. sometimes developed because they controlled major trade items. For example, Sofala because she controlled the gold trade. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, the East African coast was adjacent to the rich hinterland in the interior. Of East Africa, very good. Then the introduction and use of Swahili language is communication mm -hmm. among the business people. Okay. And then the good natural harbors and inlets that could accommodate mm -hmm. big vessels. Yes, that is true, that is very correct. We have the good, the good leadership provided by the coastal leaders. Yes. And then the coming of immigrants from outside helped to boost the population of the coast. Yes. And then there was a uh, presence of highly demanded goods like gold and silver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the introduction of curry shells in pro trade. That's leading to yes. the development of coastal towns. Yes. And then um, mm. the building of Quranic schools promoted Islamic writing. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all I remember. Okay. Uh, it's amazing how you can, uh, how you reproduce all these points. And that means that you're reading history. You are prepared. You are ready. You are getting better and better. Anyway, all those points you've said are correct. Uh, maybe just a few that you may not have mentioned here. The Bantu tribes introduce iron working skills. Uh, we have the good conducive coastal climate. You talked about that. The presence of fertile soils at the coast that facilitated farming um, made the coastal towns to grow. Many islands at the coast were surrounded by water and therefore giving them a natural protection against external enemies. That was not mentioned. The good natural harbors for anchoring, that was mentioned. Then taxation of the visiting traders generated a lot of wealth. That was not mentioned. You captured that. Um, evolution of the use of Swahili, that was mentioned. Some coastal towns developed because they controlled major trade routes, like Sofala, that was mentioned. Then um, a good leadership, for example, the Sultan, Sultan Ibn Ali Hassan, the good leadership provided by the different leaders in the different coastal towns. Hospitality of the coast of the East African people, and then you have the presence of cheap labor, cheap labor coming from the slaves, of course. 
So you can see that the coastal towns grew uh, very fast because of those points. But of course, you should remember you explain these points, explain them. But the most important thing is you should first remember these points. So there are many, as you can see, they are close to 20. Mm -hmm. They are close to 20 points, factors that led to the growth of the coastal towns. Right. Now, what about if they ask you a question like this one? Explain the main features of life. Mm -hmm. A question is here. What table is uh, who has unmuted? Rose. Rose, your mic is uh, not very stable. We need to see what to do. Anyway, so here they have asked you a question like this. And the question is what were the main features of life? What were the main features of life in those towns? What were the main features of life in the East African coast? What do you think the question is asking for? Mm -hmm. I'm getting a lot of feedback uh, from Lenovo Tablet. I am just going to mute this person here because I can't hear what you say. Please, if you want to give us a, a response and uh, you see your mic is coming, use the chat. Let's use the chat. There's a lot of feedback. Mm -hmm. All right. So what were the features of life at the East African coast? Mm -hmm. How did the people at the East African coast town live their life? In other words, what were the main features of life in the East African coast town? Please, Rose, mute your mic. We are getting a lot of feedback. So what were the main features of life at the East African coastal towns? How did these people live their life? Who could be knowing some of the answers? Yes, I can see here, Paul gave us an answer, the presence of highly demanded goods like slaves, correct? The coming of foreigners like the Arabs and the Persians, correct? Uh, they had uh, what? about love for adventure, that is also correct. I think that refers to the coming of the Arabs. Okay. Oh, Rose, you want to take us through the main features of life at the East African coastal towns? You are free. If you're ready, you start. Rose, your hand has disappeared. Are you giving us the answers or you are just stretching yourself? What was the, uh -huh. Daniela? Daniela, your hand is up. You have some um, answers for us. Pictures of how they live in the coastal town. Yes. Swahili language. Mm -hmm. The language. Yes. Koranic schools were built. Uh, the teachers were also Islamic. Correct. Then uh, there is the Sharia law. Correct. Architecture was used. Mm -hmm. Correct. Culture was practiced. Um, the, the main rulers were. What, sorry, the, the, the towns are ruled by sultans or sheikhs. Then yes. um they they the, the Arabs and the Persians em, sorry enforce themselves as the rulers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, remember. Okay, maybe a few things that um, you may not have remembered. Is anyone else who wants to add? 
other features of uh, the li of life at the coast. Heroes, you really struggle here. You can see. There's a lot of feedback here. We can't really hear you. We don't know what to do at home. So other things that you may not have captured here. It is true that um, agriculture was practiced in some of the coastal towns. Um, slave trade was uh, a very common practice. And the Arabs needed slaves, by the way. And actually, up to now, Arabs use slaves. Arabs need a lot of, of labor, free labor or cheap labor. Um, the culture, of course, was Islamic culture. Uh, there was uh, sometimes scarcity of um, some trade items. And uh, there was power struggles between some of the coastal towns. There was... Uh, a time when I think Kilwa was fighting with Mombasa mm, because of power. Then uh, the religion, of course, was Islam. The language was Swahili. The culture was Swahili. Uh, the food that was uh, eaten was, of course, Arabic. The nature of buildings was Arabic. Schools were all Arabic schools. So everything rotated around the Arabs. So that is how you answer that question explain the many features of life at these at the coastal towns at the time when the Arabs were, were there. So they can ask you part A, explain the factors le that led to the growth of the coastal towns, part A. Then part B, they can ask you what were the main features of life at the coastal towns between AD 1000 and AD <clears throat> 1,500. So that is how you go about it. Then they can ask the third question still related to the growth of the coastal towns. What factors contributed to the decline of the coastal towns? What factors led to the decline of the coastal towns? Who has the answers for that one. What factors led to the decline of the coastal towns? Who wants to take us very fast through the factors that led to the decline of the coastal towns? Two people I see, Kiberu, uh, there is Daniela, there are very many people. I want to get someone who has not taken us through something. Let me take Kiberu. Peter. Thank you, sir. I think mm -hmm. the first factor would be the coming of foreigners, mm -hmm. like the Portuguese. Uh, the second factor would be uh, the internal conflict between the coastal states. OK. Uh, the last point I would give. Yes. It would be the overutilization of the African resources, the coastal resources, and also slavery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all cool. right. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you very much. Uh, Elizabeth, could you pick up from there, continue, and then I give a um, chance to your friends also. What other yeah, factors led to mm. yeah, The coastal states were always in rebellion against the Portuguese. Then yes. the existence of bitter quarrels between towns like Malindi and Mombasa. Then yes. trade items that passed due to the tribal wars that were going on. Okay. Yeah, then the outbreak of famine as a result of destruction of crops. Okay, then, correct. Mm. Yeah, the culture and religious differences. Okay. And then slave trade led to the decline of the coastal states because uh, it took the young and the energetic. 
and then the man people. eaters that invaded the coast led to its decline. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can stop there and others contribute. Yes. Good, good, good. Let me see who else is up here. I see uh, okay, Gilbo. Gilbo. You have more answers for us? The conflict, there were conflicts due to religious differences between Arabs who are Muslims and Portuguese who are Christians. The African okay. were, since they were heavily looted by the Portuguese. All right. The, chas the chasing away of Arabs from the coast by the Portuguese. Mm -hmm. Africans okay. were stopped from participating in the trade. Uh, okay. depopulation, depopulation due to constant slave raids. There All was right. insecurity. There was high insecurity during due to acquisition of guns. The invasion okay. by invasion by the sea pirates and mm -hmm. high taxes charged by high taxes charged by the Portuguese. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Gilbo. I see two responses here in the chat. Somebody has said the coming of Portuguese, that is correct. The coming of the missionaries, that is also correct. Then you had the heavy taxation by the Arabs that also affected trade and in many ways it led to the decline of some coastal towns. That is very true. Anyway. Uh, you can see, let me see if there are more responses here. Exhaustion of some of the trade items like ivory that became in uh, that became scarce over time. Maybe some points that may not have been mentioned. All of you have mentioned very many points and uh, all of them are correct. And I'm very glad that you people are reading history and you people are getting ready for the paper. Okay, some points that may not have been mentioned. We have here external invasion from the Portuguese uh, was in the interior contributed to the decline of the coastal towns. What was causing the war? Sometimes the war would be caused because of competition for power in the interior, but also sometimes because of fighting to control the trade. And I hope we now know that um, while the Portuguese were at the cost, of course, uh, waiting for the goods to be brought by the Africans, that was also the time when long distance trade was happening. So the Africans moving with the goods for long distances from the interior to bring the same goods to the coast. And sometimes the Arabs would come into the interior. So all this was happening simultaneously. All right. As a result, we have here, um, as a result, they built mosques, uh, Quranic schools. They were mainly traders anyway. Now we know the effects of the growth of the, I mean, the factors that led to the decline of the coastal towns. So now we have looked at two very important areas, the Arabs and the coastal towns. Something else that is also very, very important about uh, the East African coast, before we talk about the Portuguese, and then in the coming of the Omani Arabs, we have the Swahili culture. If they ask a question like this, explain the origin and the development of the Swahili culture at the coast of East Africa. What factors led to the growth of the Swahili culture? First of all, what is the Swahili culture in the first place? When they, someone tells you about the Swahili culture, what are they talking about? Swahili culture. What was the Swahili culture? Before we start talking about the factors that led to the growth of the Swahili culture. Anybody with an idea? 
what this means, the Swahili culture. Yes. I can see Hillary. Is that Hillary or Sh Shamim? I can't get the name very clear. Okay, I want someone who has not made, she has not said something here. Hila Shim, please tell us about the Swahili culture. What was it? Uh, the Swahili culture was that culture that began with the Arabs when they came into contact with the Africans. Okay. The following, the, mm, following the intermarriage, following the stay of the Arabs here in East Africa, a new culture developed that was a mixture of Arabic culture and the African different cultures. And uh, because of that, a new culture developed that was called the Swahili culture, a new language developed that was called the Swahili language. And um, in some areas, they call it the Afro-Arab culture. In other words, the mixture of the Arab and African culture led to the birth of the Swahili culture. So when did this culture become so visible? How long did it take the Swahili culture to become serious? Hmm? So the Arabs arrived in East Africa between AD 1000 to AD 1500, not very clear. But between AD 1300 and AD 1500, this culture hmm, became very, very prominent in East Africa. In other words, the Swahili language was now fully developed. The Swahili culture was now fully, uh, fully developed. So the question is, what factors led to the growth of the Swahili culture? Has anyone of any of you been to Mombasa? You've lived in Mombasa. Anyone who has been to Mombasa? Okay. So the Swahili people, how do they look like? Gilbo, you've been to Mombasa? Because Mombasa is like, um, okay, maybe you've not been there, but at least you've seen these people on TV. You've seen them on pictures. These are a half caste race, you see? They are not exactly black people, and yet they are not exactly white. So they are a crossbreed between the Arabs and the Africans. So how did they come? into how were they born? Of course, the, that was an impact of intermarriage. So one of the factors that led to the growth of uh, the Swahili culture, obviously, now comes to be the intermarriage between the Arabs and the Africans. That's one of the factors. Anybody who would be remembering some of the factors mm, that led to the growth of uh, the Swahili culture or the origin of the Swahili culture. Mm -hmm. Anyone with the answers to this? Any, anybody who knows the factors that led to the growth of the Swahili culture or the origin of the Swahili culture, they ask you what were the origins of the Swahili culture? What answers do you give? Let me check if there's anyone who has the answers. If not, I take people through. All right. So listen to the answers now. <clears throat> um, explain the factors that led to the growth of the Swahili culture. Or explain the origin and development of the Swahili culture. This is what they expect you to do. Or you start by telling us after the coming of the Arabs and settlement in the different parts of East Africa, like Mogadishu, like Mombasa, Sofala, Zanzibar, and other areas, a new culture was born, and new, that new culture became known as the Swahili culture. It was a mixture between the Arab culture and the African different cultures. 
in some areas, or some people call it the Afro-Arab culture. Now, the Swahili culture mainly developed between AD 1000 to AD 1500, or we could say between the 13th to 15th century. It was a complete civilization that borrowed a lot from the Arab culture or from the Arab people, but also at the same time, <clears throat> it borrowed a lot from the African people. In other words, Africans changed the life of the Arabs in many ways, but also the Arabs changed the life of the Africans in many ways. And then they started living together. After intermarriage, giving back to a half caste race, people who were very brown, and they speak a new language that was called Swahili. Now, on reaching the coast, the Arabs intermarried with the local people and they gave back to the Swahili people. If you went to Mombasa today or in most of these coastal towns, if you went to Zanzibar, if you went to Dar es Salaam, you're going to meet many of these people who are very light skinned and they speak Swahili and their culture is the Swahili culture. And in most cases, many of them are Muslims. The Swahili people were a half caste race, mainly very brown or light skinned in color. The Swahili people mainly spoke the Swahili language and they still speak the Swahili language. The Swahili language remained uninterrupted up to the 16th century. And uh, it's very important to note that today we have many dialects of Swahili. We have Swahili that is very, very popular in along the coastal towns, especially uh, the coast within Mombasa, which is very different from the Swahili that is spoken in the interior. If you went to Nairobi today, you're going to find the Swahili people speak is different. So the language has gone through a series of changes. So the language remained uninterrupted, at least up to the 16th century. The Swahili people occupied the coastal towns within Kenya and Tanzania. They were basically Muslims due to the Arab influence. Uh, after the introduction of the Swahili culture, a range of things changed. For example, there was a change in um, the standard of living changed. Some societies gave up their economic activities and started trade. Uh, Islam now became the main religion. The new ruling dynasties now were mainly, <clears throat> mainly based on the Swahili system and Islam became further spread into the interior and many other things had to change. So I can see <clears throat> that this is one area where I think many people did not have uh, ideas the origin of the Swahili culture but I want to remind you that it is part of the East African coastal history and it is very important that you take note of it and read it also because they can also set it you never know if they do not set about the arabs and they do not set about the growth and decline of the coastal towns maybe they can set about the swahili culture now one area that i want us also to compare now let us compare the effects of the Swahili culture with the effect of the coming and settlement of the Arabs. And then you're going to see that the effects of the Arabs are the same in many ways with the effects of the Swahili culture. So now after telling you that the effects are the same, if I ask you a question like this, what were the effects of the Swahili culture? on the peoples of East Africa? What would be your answer? What were the effects of the Swahili culture on the peoples of East Africa? What were the effects of the Swahili culture 
on the peoples of East Africa. How do you think the Swahili culture affected the people of East Africa? Let me check in the charts. There could be some responses here. Yes, the Swahili culture was an Arab word. Swahili meaning the coast, the coming of the Arabs, uh, the Czech coming of Arabs at the coast led to the development of the Swahili culture, correct? Hospitality of the people of East Africa, intermarriage, all these are correct responses. Okay. Okay, all right. So let us see, what do you think were the effects of the Swahili culture on the people of East Africa? I've already given you a clue that the effects of the Swahili culture were the same as the effects of the coming of the Arabs. Yes, Daniela, take us through the effects of the Swahili culture. The Swahili culture led to the spread of of Kiswahili as a nation, sorry, as a medium of communication. Correct. It also led to new crops, new crops yes. like bananas, then new mm. kinds of food like um, pilau, I guess that was the example you gave. I don't know. Yes, yes, yes it's true. It led Correct. to the construction of mosques. Correct. It led to the widespread of Islamic faith. Correct. It led to Islamic way of dressing at the cost. It led to the introduction of, sorry, the use of Sharia law. Then introduction correct. of Greek schools. Mm -hmm. Introduction. Introduction of new commodities like clothes and guns. It fostered mm -hmm. unity. It fostered unity at the cost since everyone was under a similar culture. Mm -hmm. um, that is correct. It, it, it strengthened trade relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, it led to the formation of new currency, like curry shells and coins yes. later. Correct. Then it led to um to the high pop to, to an increase in the population of Arabs and Persians who settled at the East African coast since there was and Islam. Mm -hmm, correct. Um, it also led to the development in agriculture. Yes. Um, it led to the Africans adopting titles of leadership, such as sultans. Yes, correct. Continue. Just the intermarriages, and then it was also of domestic animal, sheep, and chicken. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I can see still somebody's hand is up. Who wants to continue from there? Anyone who wants to continue? Daniela, your hand is still up. Are you proceeding or you only stretching yourself? Okay. Okay, all right, let's continue. Other effects, like you said, it is true that the effects of the Arabs are the same as the effects of the Swahili culture. And that's one thing I wanted you to learn, that just in case they ask about the effects of the Swahili culture, <clears throat> and then for you, you read the Arabs. Don't struggle. Just use the factors, I mean, the effects of the settlement of the Arabs and answer the effects of the Swahili culture because you cannot have one and miss the other. Mm -hmm. You cannot have the Arabs and you don't have the Swahili culture because the two, uh, one led to the other. So because of that, we are not going to concentrate and waste a lot of time on the Swahili culture because already we know the answers. So we should be moving to something else, something completely different. Now, I hope you've seen, I have uh, shared these notes, these questions and answers I've put in the chat. 
in case anybody wants this, you can download it and print the pages that you want. It has, what I'm sharing with you now has questions and answers from the first topic, from the Zeng Empire up to the last topic, only questions and answers. Maybe that may be useful to some people. If you're interested, you'll pick it up there and then you can print it and you make use of it. So let us go to something different now, the coastal trade, the coastal trade or the Indian Ocean trade. If they ask you, what factors led to the growth and the development of the Indian Ocean trade? First of all, what was this? What was the Indian Ocean trade? What was the Indian Ocean trade, people? Who remembers the Indian Ocean trade? What was it? Yes, Josephine. The Indian Ocean trade was the trade which was carried out between the Arabs and the coastal people between 1,500 AD, between 1,000 AD to 1,500 AD. Mm. Yes. Okay. Did this trade involve movement across the Indian Ocean? Or yes. it just happened along the East African coast. It involved sometimes moving the goods from the coast of East Africa to Arabia. Okay. And of course, goods would also be brought from Arabia to the coast of East Africa. Maybe before we start explaining the factors that led to the growth of the Indian Ocean trade, Gilbo, you have something to add? All right, so let's see. What commodities did the Africans sell during this time? And what commodities did the Arabs sell during that time? What commodities were sold by the Africans and what commodities were sold by the Arabs? Yes, Hillary, Hilashim. What? Okay, the ones uh -huh. which were sold by Africans. Yes. There was gold which was got from that Menomon Tapa. Mm. Correct. Then there was ivory. Yes. Then sometimes there were slaves which were taken to to the other countries to be helped. Yes. So then the, the Arabs. Yes. Mm. Then the plus salt. Yes. Then the uh, the whatever the Indians the stuff those people came to trade. They bought him. Yes. Continue. They bought in guns, beads, and gunpowder. Yes, I can see somebody has mentioned here in the chat. Thank you very much. Someone has mentioned in the chat here, has said uh, Arabs brought beads, glassware, guns, and gunpowder. And uh, someone is saying, I am not seeing the notes. Surely I have posted the notes. And it is showing that it has uploaded. You see, somebody must have seen the notes because it is showing that it has uploaded. But anyway, if anyone wants the notes and you could you cannot see it there, you will uh, find me on this number, and then I can send it to you on WhatsApp, or you can also find me on this number, and then I can still also send it to you on WhatsApp. Sorry for the interruption, but it's because some people are saying they cannot see the notes. So uh, let's continue and see the factors that led to the growth of the Indian Ocean trade. Now we know the items that were sold by the Africans. We also know the items that were sold by 
the Arabs. So what factors led to the growth of this trade that was called the Indian Ocean trade? Who wants to take us through some of the factors that led to the growth of the Indian Ocean trade? Yes, Hilashim. Um, okay, there was absorption and displacement of hunters. Okay. And uh, introduction of guns and swords. Okay. The monsoon winds, which is the transportation of Arabs from Arabia to the coastal towns. Okay. Mm, then Islam was that was introduced by the Arabs also created a sense of unity at the coast. Mm -hmm. The building of Quranic schools which promoted Islamic reading and literature. Okay. Then there was um, introduction of curry shells which improved the trading relations at the coast. Continue if you have more points. Mm, the coming of many Im immigrants, especially from the outside East Africa, Igi, the Arabs, the Kushites, Bantu. Yes. And then there was presence of highly demanded goods at the coast. For example, gold, ivory, and the slaves, which attracted the foreigners to come to East Africa. Okay. Then the hospitality of coastal people, which encouraged their coming, the good favorable climate. Yes. Then presence of fertile soils that supported farming and agriculture. Okay. The strategic location of the coast. Mm -hmm. The good natural harbors that could accommodate yes those for the traders okay then the development of Chiswahili language which is communication okay the good leadership provided by the coastal people all right and the taxation of visiting foreigners that provided enough revenue for the coastal towns okay Mm, thank you all. very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Those were all, all those are correct responses. Now, it is true that this trade took place uh, between the people of East Africa and also the people who came from Arabia. But one thing maybe we didn't mention is that the trade was not only between the Arabs and the Africans. The, the trade was also between other people. For example, people from Malaysia also took part in this trade. People from Greece. Plus the Indians. Okay, um, yes, I let me get back to my lesson. Somebody had called me and interrupted my lesson. So I was saying trade was between the Malaysians and the Greeks. They also took part in this trade. And all those factors that you have mentioned are actually correct. They are all correct. Now, if they ask you this question, describe the organization of the Indian Ocean trade. How was the trade organized? 
describe the organization of the Indian Ocean trade. How or during which month would the Arabs come? During which month would the Arabs go? What were the commodities? Uh, where did they come from? What were the major trading centers? Those are the things they wanted to talk about. How was this trade organized? Who wants to say something about that? How was the Indian Ocean trade organized? Meet teacher. Yes. Okay, you can start right away. This trade was was known as the coastal trade. Okay. It was between the coast of East Africa, Arabia, and the Far East. Okay. It developed because it, it develops due to the coming of the Arabs. Okay. It's developed because the co the coast provided ideal climate. Okay. The trade was conducted amongst groups, for example, the Kushites, Bantu, and foreign traders. Okay. Continue. The trade was based on the prevailing seasonal winds. Okay. These winds blew the Arab doors towards the coast between November and April, and then back to Asia between May and October. Okay. The main, ex the main exports from East Africa included gold, ivory, slaves, copper, honey, and bill wax. Mm. Most of these goods were exported from the interior of East Africa. Okay. These trade items were mainly exported through the Indian Ocean. Okay. The imports from Asia included guns, clothes, beads, iron, and utensils. Okay. The medium of exchange was butter trade. Okay, correct. Later on, curry shells were also introduced. Okay, correct. The foreign traders used vessels as as Arab doors. Correct. The foreign traders did not enter the interior because they feared the hostility of some tribes. Okay. The main trading centers at the coast were Kira and Sofara for gold and Zanzibar for slaves. Okay. The trade items were mainly exported along the Indian Ocean route. Okay. All times the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea would also be used leading to Turkey, Oman, and Yemen. Correct. And the medium of communication was Swahili. Correct. Yes, I stop there. Thank you. You have uh, discussed very many points about the organization. You have almost exhausted all. But I think the most important thing people need to remember here is that if they ask you about the organization of any trade, that is exactly what they want you to talk about. For example, if they ask you about the organization of the Indian Ocean trade, you talk about it in that way. If they ask you to explain the organization of the long distance trade, also you have to explain it in, in that way. And I hope you remember that there are only two trades that are in this paper, especially in regard to the early history of East Africa. And I'm talking about the Indian Ocean trade, and then, of course, the long distance trade. And it's important to note that these two trades were happening concurrently. Whereas long distance trade was happening in the interior, uh, the Indian Ocean trade was also happening between the coast of East Africa and other, other areas. So what is now left are the effects of the coastal trade.
on the people of East Africa. How did the cost of trade affect the people of East Africa? How did this trade affect the people of East Africa? Of course, here you're going to find that the, some of the effects were negative, some of the effects were positive, some of the effects were economic, others were social, but in most, uh, all in all, the effects were many. So who wants to take us through the effects of the cost of trade on the people of East Africa? I can see people are, uh, uh, let me talk to Uthman. Uthman, I don't want someone to leave this meeting without saying a word. So Uthman, do you want to take us through the effects of the cost of trade on the people of East Africa? Are you ready? Okay, as Uthman prepares, let me give a chance to Hilashim. Then after, we shall give the chance to Elizabeth as we wind up. Remember, we have only six minutes, so try to be fast, but also be clear. Hilashim, start. Okay, now I will start with the introduction. Good. Okay, me and me can give an introduction as the, their effects were both positive and negative and maybe politically, socially, and economically. Mm. And then the trade led to the development of many coastal towns, which were Malindi, Kira, Sofala, ETC. Then yes, the, trade, the trade also generated a lot of wealth and prosperity to the coastal people. And um, yes. then the trade led to the introduction of new crops, it also resulted into the spread of Islam. Coastal people adopted the Sharia system of administration. Quranic schools yeah. were set up. The trade also resulted into inter intermarriages leading to the birth of Swahili culture. It yeah. led to the introduction of the new system of money, which was known as the Kaurish Rules. It generated a lot of conflicts among the various coastal states. The trade led to introduction of guns that later facilitated the Arabs to move into the interior. And the trade also promoted slave trade to the coast of East Africa, leading to loss of life and suffering of people. The trade also linked East Africa to the outside world. And it led to the introduction of new crops like rice, wheat, bananas. Yeah, I think I can stop there. Thank you. I see here in the chat somebody said it led to famine because powerful men were taken as slaves. And that is correct. Uh, who wants to pick up from them points that have not been mentioned, maybe? Okay other effects of uh, the cost of trade. Like we said, they are many, they are social, they are political, they are economic, and they are many. Uh, it led to the introduction of the art of boat making or boat building. Uh, it led to the introduction of new forms of a currency like the cowrie shells that was introduced. Some towns grew like Kirwa, Mombasa, Mogadishu. It led to intermarriage, of course, and that led to the birth of a new culture. That was the Swahili culture and the Swahili people. And this eventually led to the birth of the Swahili language. Uh, other effects, it led to the growth and prosperity of some of the coastal towns. Um, Arab migrants became the rulers over the Africans over time. There was conflict and war between some of the coastal towns, for example, Malindi and Mombasa. Uh, it led to growth of Quranic schools and many mosques were built. There was a great increase in the population in East Africa here. It improved on agriculture in some areas. 
uh, new crops were introduced, for example, rice, banana, wheat, sugar cane. The Sharia law was introduced. There was introduction of foods like pirao and chapati. Yeah? People didn't know that chapati came from, from the Arabs. It's interesting how the people in East Africa have changed the original chapati to what they are now eating. The, if you eat the original chapati the Arabs eat, it's not like the ones we, we buy along the roadside. But anyway, the idea came from the Arabs. The introduction of guns, uh, it led to uh, growth of business, or the many people became traders, and now they became middlemen between the Africans and the, and the Arabs. So, generally, the coastal trade affected the life of the people of East Africa in a number of ways, just like you have, you have seen. One last tip, as you finish or as you write your essay, make sure you conclude. I want someone who would conclude, how can you conclude this particular question you have talked about, the effects of the cost of trade? Who wants to give us a quick conclusion? Yes, Uthman. Uh, yeah. Uh, in nutshell. Yes. Uh, the effects of the of coastal trade was both positive and negative on the lives of mm -hmm. Africans. Mm -hmm. As explained above. Simple. As explained above. Yes. Thank you very much. Oh, this has it has been very good interacting with you. I have shared with you my numbers on the charts. I have also shared with you the material that I'm, I have used today. It's unfortunate you have not had enough time to share everything, but I hope if you get the notes, you have the time to read it through the things that we have not shared here. In case someone else needs any extra help, please feel free to use my number to call me or to send me a uh, WhatsApp, and then I will give you my opinion on the concern. Let us stop here and have a good day. I can see someone here has also given us another conclusion, very good one still. In conclusion, the cost of trade had political, social, and economic effects. Very good, thank you very much. So let us stop here until we meet again. My number, someone is still asking for my number. It's here, 0704114763. That is one of my numbers. That other num another one, 0772199377. Those are my two numbers. Let me just share the notes once again. Maybe some people will find it here now.
Raymond, you went and picked the phone. Mommy told you to go. You just went on your own. She called you to, to go and pick the phone. 